Hi gents, uh, this here is a question that was asked uh, a good while ago. Uh, it's quite a it's quite a tricky topic, which is why it's taken me a while just to get together a few of the resources uh, just to just to show you what it's like. It's uh, it's trigonometry and specifically it's trigonometric functions. I think they are really really important. Um, we did do them, but it's a long time ago. You know, well over a year, I'm sure, um, and so it's totally easy to forget uh, everything that's happened uh, with them. So what I want to do is uh, I want to deal with this question. It's 2017 this is actually the one suggested and uh, and it's a great one to show that you know it or you don't know it. Um, before we kick into it, and I might have to split this video up into two, we'll see as we go along. We'll certainly be pausing it just to grab a few things. Uh, We'll just do a quick little rundown of trigonometry, just to remind you how to get the uh, sine or cosine of something. So it already comes back to the unit circle, worth mentioning that. If you pick any particular point, we'll take this point here, that's got an x value and a y value. Now what does that point mean? That means we have moved over a value of x and we've moved up a value of y. That is what it means, okay. Because it's the inner circle, it has a radius of one, one zero, zero one, minus one zero, etc. Okay. Right. If we take this particular point here, where we've moved over, as I said, x, and we've moved up y, we said the radius is one, so we've created some sort of angle here. Now, if we think about the basics of trigonometry, which is that sine is simply the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The opposite of this angle here is y, and the hypotenuse is one. So we actually just get that the y value, y is equal to sine theta. So another way to say it is that if you turn at an angle of theta, if you go up this angle here from this position, from lying flat, if you go up, theta, whatever the y value is, whatever the height is, however much you've gone up by, that will be the equivalent of sine theta. So if you go 45 degrees, whatever height you have now achieved, like that height, for instance, that will be the sine of 45, whatever that height is. Okay. It also goes to show why when you have the sine of a particular value, okay, it cannot be you may not be uh, greater than one. It can be equal to one, sure. That's specifically at an angle of 90 degrees. If that spins up 90, so that it is just directly up, then the height itself, as you can see there, is going to be a height of one. So we would say sine of 90 is one. In fact, you can figure out all of these things here. We'll use a different color. If you swing around 180, you're going to land there. And if you do land there, your height, so if we, let's just write in some of these, what's sine of zero, what's sine 90, what's sine 180, etc. Well, sine of zero, if we don't move at all, we're just lying flat. Oh dear, I've lost that. Can I get that back? I can't. Okay, if you're just lying flat, what is your height going to be? Your height is going to be zero. So if you put in sine of zero, zero degrees, you will get a height of zero. If you put in sine 90, that is to say, we are now going straight up. What's my height? My height is going to be one. And you can type it in, sine 90 equals one. If you put in sine 180, like I've indicated here, we've gone 180 degrees, we're lying flat now. And if you do lie flat, what you will find is that you have a height also of zero. You can type these into your calculator just to remind yourself. If you do sine of 270, you are going to get minus one. So you've gone 270, you're now that direction. What's your height? Your height is minus one. Um, and then if we're at 360, it's the same as being zero. So you can just take it as that. Okay, um, right, with that said, uh, what can we say about cos? Yeah, cos, cos theta. Well, we know from over here that cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and the adjacent is x and the hypotenuse is one so we just get cos theta is equal to x over one 
So cost theta is just your x value. Your x value is how far over have you moved over. So when you go to that angle there, how far have you moved? And if you say cos of zero, so again, if we're lying flat, how much has it moved over to the right? Well, it's moved over one unit. And again, it can't be bigger than one. If you put in the cos of 90, let's say we've gone up the way, so we're directly up. How much have we moved over left or right? Well, we haven't at all. So it has an x value of zero, cos of 180. Well, if we move all the way over here so that we're just lying flat, how much have we moved over? We have moved over one, but in the left direction. So we'd say cos 80 equals minus one. And cos of 270 is also zero. Okay, so hopefully you understand why that is. And in fact, I got a little video of both things here, just uh, nabbed off somebody's YouTube channel just to just to show you. Uh, I think this one was uh, was nice and nice and clear in terms of graphics. Uh, so if I just press play. Let's just understand what's happening here. They're moving up an angle, okay. And what they're saying is that the this is a sine curve. So remember, sine is your height. So when you've moved up to that angle, your height is right there. So they're drawing in the height. Okay. So if I pause here. When we've moved up this angle here, what's my height? My height is that level, so they've just drawn it up to that level there. When we're at 90 degrees, it's at the highest point it's going to be, and then the height goes down as we come along here. It'll go to zero, it'll go to minus one, and so too will this function. It'll head down towards zero when we're at 180 degrees. Now, why is it not 180 degrees here? Because they're doing it in radians, okay? We know that 2 pi is equal to 360 so pi is equal to 180 and you can see it crosses the curve at just over 3 so really this is at 0 is exactly at pi so 3.14 ish uh, and from there so you'll see it then goes down to uh, minus 1 and that'll occur at 270 degrees or the equivalent in radians and back up okay so it's a nice little demonstration of what's happening the same thing will be true for cos, except in cos's case, uh, you're not looking at what the height is, you're looking, uh, so the height is your y value. Instead, you're looking at what's your left, right value, how far left or right have you gone? So you're looking at your x value and you go from there. Okay, uh, with all that said, sorry, where am I going? Uh, with all that said, um, let's let's just have a little talk about this so uh what we might do is we might just take a regular old uh cosine uh and sine thing so i'll tell you what i'll pause it and i'll go grab uh, i'll go grab that for you it'll be there in a sec okay uh well you learn something new every day this uh ruler thing is fantastic it takes ages but it's uh it's a great it's a great way to make a diagram best diagram i've ever made uh let's see if i can mess it up now um so what we've done here is we're we're, we're just gonna um, graph a function, okay? Now it doesn't matter which one uh, we're gonna do. We can do sine or we can do cos. The one over on the left hand side does uh, cos. So we'll just do sine just so that we've done both things, okay? Even though as I say, we have, we have done this before, but just it's a long and distant memory. Y is equal to cos theta. Okay, so we got theta down here. I've done them in degrees. Okay, you should probably do them in radians. That is definitely the more pure thing to do, but you know what, I'm just gonna put them in just so we know it. It'd be very easy to change it. We know that two pi is equal to 360 degrees and that pi is equal to 180 degrees. So you can work out what each of these are as you go along. That's not gonna be, that's not gonna be a problem. Okay, we will first of all do uh, cos theta, just a very simple cos theta. So what you can do here, uh, will it be worthwhile doing this? I think it might be worthwhile doing this. What we'll do is we'll make a, a little table, maybe if we do it over here, uh, it might be, might be a nice idea. So we want to do is we want to have input, and we want to have output. Uh, whoops, output. So our input is theta, our output is y. Okay, normally we talk about x, but you can put that in there if you want. 
So we'll just do this for, for a quick second here. And uh, we'll say if we put in zero, so the cos of zero, now if you think back to your triangle, remember cos is your x value. What's your x value when you put in zero degrees, you will get one back out. So it's no bad thing you can actually set up a table on your calculator or you can just type these in as you go along. Just make sure you're in degrees mode if you're gonna do it like me. So the cost of zero, we'll put in the cost of 90. We already know what the cost of 90 is. It is going to be zero. The cost of 180, but actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here as we as we go ahead and do these. So I'm gonna go up uh, in these, okay? I'm gonna go up in 30 each time if that's okay. So what we'll do is we'll put in the cost of 30 cost of 30 comes out as root 3 over 2 or 0 0.866 cost of 60 should have these learned off 0 0.5 cost of 90 I think we already said was 0 so let's just fill in these values here so costs on you well I won't say unusually because it's not unusual cost starts uh, cost of 0 starts up at 1 whereas actually with sine it starts at 0 Okay, we're gonna put in 30 degrees here. Hopefully you can see these notches, of like little notches out. Each one is 30 degrees you go along. So when we put in 30, it's 0.866. So, uh, I don't know, round about there. Uh, when we put in 60, it's up at a half. When we put in 90, we're at zero. Okay, when we put in, now remember we're going up in 30s, so when we put in cos of 120, it's going to be a negative number, minus 0 0.5. And in fact, it's just going to mirror what's above it. 150 is going to be minus 0 0.86, eh, 866, sorry. And when we get to 180, we'll be back to zero. So let's do that. Uh, right, so we're looking at about here, um, about there, and minus one. For that so what we should be looking at is a curve like that okay curve like that uh, I think I can see a slight issue this one should be over a little bit more just based on what we know is the case and knowing what the answer is is always helpful when it comes to it. Okay, when we keep uh, when we keep adding these, you're very welcome, Peter. Uh, we have costs of two ten being minus uh, cost of two ten being minus zero point eight six six. So it's basically what it's saying is it's on the way back up. Okay, so that's there. Uh, this is going to be minus 0 0.5, 270 is going to be that. So you're basically going to have the same, uh, almost, you're basically going to have the same thing occurring. And it'll be back up at 360, we'll have one. So I'll try to do that. There, thereabouts. So it looks something like that, and then it'll just keep on going. Okay, not to, uh, not to scale necessarily on that little part there. Okay, uh, that is what you're looking at with costs. So, you know, I will just put in the rest of it here because it'll just make it, just make it that little bit more accessible in terms of understanding. Okay. Okay, like that. That's maybe slightly too straight for what I was going for. Hmm. Like that might be, might be a little bit better. Draw in what you know to be and then uh, make the results fit. We're doing that a bit. Um, okay, let's say it looks something like that. That seems pretty reasonable uh, to me for stuff that we've made up. Okay, um, right. Here's what I want to do now. I want to see what would happen, what would occur if we were to muck around with this slightly, if we were to change this ever so slightly. So if we were to say y is equal to one plus cos theta. What effect is that going to have on the whole thing? So what's happening here is I did have an input of theta, but now while I still have an input of theta, Whatever answer I had previously, okay, 
we were just getting cos theta, but now we're just adding one onto it. Okay, so the effect of having one is that we're at an output of one, I now have an output of two. Where I had an output of 0.866, I have an output of 1.866. Now, what is going to happen here to all of our um, to all of our numbers? The only thing that's going to happen here is that the height is increasing. The whole height, it's just whatever it was, but an additional one. So where we were at one, we're going to be up here. Where we were at 0.866, we're going to be at one. 0.866, 1 1.5, 1. Now, it goes down again. So what we're going to get is we're going to get this, just like we had before, and then it's going to go there. Okay, and remember where am I aiming for? Around about there. Like that. Maybe we've gone a tiny bit high on that. Um, and so you can see, and that, that's going to come down to like one there or thereabouts. So what this does, what the one does, is it shifts it up or down. Okay, it shifts it up or down. In this case, one has simply been added on to cos theta. If it was something like minus two, like that, what we would be doing is we'd be taking our graph and we would be bringing it down to every single point simply gets taken down to. So that's... A really important bit to see is what occurs whenever you go and you simply add a number onto it okay so that is what is that's what's going to happen to it okay i might just try to uh, write this over here maybe y is equal to uh, one plus cos theta okay what instead we'll try and pick a different color here so we'll go some sort of blue Will that stand out? Uh, it's not all that clear on mine, but anyway, uh, compared to black, that is. So we have y is equal to, let's let's just do a different one. We'll do two cos theta. Okay, have a think yourself. What effect is that going to have on what cos theta was beforehand? Sorry, I'll take this here. What will it do to our output? When I don't compare it to the red one, okay, compare it to the green one, it's simply going to be two times whatever we got beforehand. So when we got a value of one, it's going to be two. When we got a value of 0.866, it's going to be, uh, we'll multiply that by two, 1.732. When it has a height of 0.5, it's gonna be one. So it is different from the previous one, that's worth saying. And it'll also, when it was zero, it'll also be zero. So let's just have a look at what that would be over on our graph here. It also starts off at two. Now it goes to 1.732. That's a little bit below where we were with the red. Then it's going to go down to one. Then it's gonna go down to zero. So what you do get is you do get the same thing. Okay, just, when, where's it going to go down to? It'll go down to minus two here. So it looks something like that. And it'll come up here. Okay, sorry, we'll try and do that a little bit better. There, and it's going up to this one as well. Okay, now suddenly it's getting a wee bit crowded inside here. So you know what I'll just do, and um, maybe I can get it. Maybe I can get it back again. I'm going to get rid of just our red. Let me try that again. Get rid of our red one here, so you can just see it now compared to the green. What's happened effectively by putting the two uh, in front of it? What we've done is we've stretched the green one. Okay. Whereas what the red one did was it literally like picked it up and shifted it up one. In this case, what we've done is we've stretched it. Obviously, if that two was a three, it would just be stretching it except times three. Uh, if we're a half, what it would be doing is it would be squishing it. Okay, instead of starting at one, it would start at a half. Okay, so it would be like, 
and to minus a half, etc. So that's what that one would look like if that were uh, a half. Okay. So whenever you stick a number out in front of it, what you're going to get is you are going to uh, shift the whole thing up or down. Whereas when, uh, so that's you know a number added onto it. When you take a number and you multiply it by cos uh, theta, what you're essentially doing is you're stretching it. I wonder, can I get back uh, my red thing? I can. Oop. Uh, oh, oh, where's the go forward button? I don't know. You can recreate it. Okay. All right. So that's what we're looking at there um, with with that function. Okay, there's one more than now that we have to look at. So let's see. We're starting to run out of uh, run out of colors. We'll go with uh, we'll go with vomit yellow there. Okay, y is equal to what happens, for instance, and we'll just do it like this. What happens if we stick a, if we stick a number in here? What if we say the cos of um, I'm sorry to pick two again. I would pick three, but I think uh, is worth picking three. Let me just think about this for a second. Uh, yeah, we'll go with three just for a second. Okay. Let's just go over to our little function over here. Now let's think about this. When we stick zero in for theta, we're going to get the cos of three times zero. And the cos of three times zero is just the cos of zero. So it's just as we had before, the cos of zero, which is one. Here's the important part. When you put in 30, 30 for theta. Now, 30, if you just put in cos of 30, and this is not the cos of 30, it's the cos of three by 30. But if you would have put in the cos of 30, you would have got this. But now what you're doing is you're getting the cos of 3 times 30. You're actually getting the cos of 90. So we know that when you place 30 in into the 3 theta, you actually get this answer here. This answer occurs. Okay, so now we need to be a little bit careful about that. So what we're doing here is we're starting with 1, just like we had beforehand. But by the time that we move over just 30, we're already at 0. So what's happening is that all of those, so for instance, how about this? When would you get that answer there? When would you get the answer for 30 degrees? Like just the cost of 30 degrees. When would you get 0.866? What theta would you have to input in there in order to get 0.866? Pause it to have a little think about that. You would have to put in 10 degrees. So this 0.866 thing, which is right there, that's happening at 10 degrees. Okay, so it's happening inside there. So really what's occurring is it's doing the cosine thing, except it's happening much, 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 much faster. When you place in 60 degrees into it, you're gonna get the same answer as you would have got with 80. It goes back to zero. So when you're at 60, okay, when you're at 60, it's going to be back here at zero. Now, does that make sense? 180 is zero, so let's see what's happening here. Uh, so what was this meant to be? This was meant to be 30, at 30 degrees it was going to zero. No, hold on, this, uh, this does not seem right to me for just one second now. Um, boom, 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 boom. So cos of 180 being minus one, yeah. Why did I put that in there? Don't know why I put that in there, but uh, certainly that reveals a lot to me as to why that one wasn't working. Yeah, we go to minus one, that makes a whole lot more sense. Okay, where are we looking at? We're looking at here. Wow. So as I said, that's happening. And yeah, look, we already had the cost of 180 being minus one, so I'm not sure why I had zero in over there. Um, so there you have it. It goes like that. And again, when you get up to 90, you can see that it'll have done that. So what is the effect essentially? Down to zero. Okay, if I get rid of everything else, 
which I don't really want to do, but just for the sake of being able to see it here, what's essentially happening is when you place this number in here, when you place a number in there, it's squishing it, okay? Whereas when we placed our two in here, it was stretching it up and down or contracting it, as we said, if it was a half. In this case, when you place, when you have a number in here, like three, what it's essentially do is, doing is it's compressing it, okay? It's compressing it by a third. Everything happens just three times faster than what it was the last time, okay? Uh, obviously, if it was one third, it would be stretching it out compared to where it was, compared to that green line there. It would be all stretched out. Okay, so like a like an accordion or something like that. So it would be three times uh, longer uh, than that. So that's what you're looking at whenever you have a uh, cos of three theta. You have the exact same thing as before, except compressed. Let's see, is that everything? I think that's everything uh, put in there. Okay, so all that said, all that said, whenever you have f of x is equal to a plus b cos c t and we have been using uh, cos here yeah. and we had uh, cos over there I thought for some reason I said I was going to use sine uh, what did I say I was going to do uh, I'm not sure but anyway this is this is cos um, let's just talk about what each thing does Okay, so this thing here, what does A do? A increases or decreases the whole height, like picks it up. What does B do? Um, the height, we'll say, of the function. What does B do? B... Uh, stretches and uh, this is in an upward downward motion okay uh, so it stretches up or down the height of the function what does C do what C does is it uh, stretches or compresses left or right the function. Uh, so what we're not saying is not moving left, it's just being compressed left, okay? Uh, compresses or stretches, uh, just like the other one I won't write in stretches, um, uh, the function in a left right as in yeah left in left right okay all right i'm gonna i'm just gonna pause here but it'll continue on for you in just a sec